So the name of this temple is Ananda. Oh, yeah. But in the olden days, the olden name of this temple was Ananda. Ananda means endless or the boundless wisdom of the Buddha. And you know Ananda, he was the cousin of the Buddha. So we just changed the name. I don't know the reason why. So it has a Greek cross foundation. And there is a solid pillar in the middle of the temple. And there are two uh, walkways inside, corridors. And then there are four Buddha statues inside the temple facing the four entrances. They are wooden statues. Yes. And then there are two corridors and there are separate niches on the walls of the corridors. Altogether, 1400. All the niches contain Buddha statues inside, stone statues. It was built by the king of Bagan, King Chan Siddha. Yes. He built this one in early 12th century. According to the Bagoda legend, it was built by him and it took only a year. 4,000 people walked together to finish this temple. And he was the only one man who was selected by people to rule the country when the king passed away. He was a general and he fought so many battles and he followed with the king and Narata to unite the whole country. So he was a normal man. He born in a crowd so he know the feeling. You know that to establish a big emperor it was not easy. Especially for soldiers. They, are tra they were traveling all the time and fighting so many battles. So to establish an emperor, they traveled a lot, and when they united the whole country, after, united, unite, after unifying the whole country, they also have to travel again for the stability to control the whole area. So like that, people, especially the soldiers, the people couldn't live with the family together. Maybe they are very rich. They are warriors. They have, but they couldn't. They didn't have a chance to live with their own family, and they couldn't spend their own money for themselves. So that's why when he got the throne, he gave a promise. He announced to the country, "I will not send you anymore to the battleground. No more battle. Cease fire. Peace for everyone." So live together with the family in your own place, own kingdom, and spend your money. You are rich now. Do whatever you want. And I will help you. I will share everything with you. So that's why all the people love him very much. And then also when he built this temple, he built only the main building. And then four main Buddha statues here around the pillar and all the niches were free nothing inside and he invited the people who has the wish to come and join with him they can bring their own statue by the way people also can have a chance not only rich people but also poor people also get a chance to offer something to the Buddha, making a small statue. That's why, that's the reason how did he share with the people and people love him very much. That's why when he built this temple, it could finish within a year. This temple is also very big. And then there are four Buddha statues, standing Buddha statues inside this temple. These statues are all wooden statues. But only two are original from the Bagan period from early 12th century, other two are not. One was destroyed by Mongolian and one was destroyed by fire. So you can know exactly because of original two have Indian, so Indianized. And other new statues are very local. So the Indian one is 
the auto rating yeah. left. This one and that one. Oh. One and three. And they built at the same time? All the things were done at the same, same time. time. Yes, early 12th century. So why they make so many niches inside the temple? There is the reason. So this temple is very big. And Bagan is also situated on the bank of the river, very close to the river. So if we make very deep foundation, the water comes out. So that's why they make the thick wall for the stability of the structure and they make the niches inside to reduce the weight of the temple. And then to reduce the echo inside. If you speak, when you speak inside, because of the thick wall, echo. So to reduce the echo, they make small rooms. And then the floor is also covered with their glaze for reflection. So actually, the whole temple, the inner part of the whole temple was covered with the mural painting, like others. But because of the old age damage, the plaster fall off from the wall. It doesn't look nice. That's why the local people who live around in the village, <coughs> they painted white color on the surface. So that's why today we cannot see the mural painting anymore. But if we can remove the paint, you can see original painting and the end. So it is famous, it was famous as a museum in the olden day because of the wood carving, stone carving, mural painting and votive tablets around at the base of the temple outside. You can see everything together in one place. So, and then over there you can see the record photos. So, the first one, it was done before the earthquake. So we did a lot of renovation to this monument after earthquakes, after 1975. And then when we make the restoration, this part of the temple, we try to fill it with the new concrete and iron in a part of the temple, the top of the temple. At the time we found 8,000 small Buddha statues inside. Wow. All are pure gold. Oh, my God. Where are we keeping it? Mm -hmm. the, same. the same place? Yes. Oh. Memory day to touch. Yeah. We, have to leave, we have to keep all these things inside. Oh, it's the safest place. <laughs> <laughs> if we place, if we remove them to museum or somewhere else, not sure. Maybe, yeah. Uh, we'll be. <laughs> So what your original, uh, is this no um, iron uh, bar inside, right? Yeah. Original Originally one. it was only brick, solid With little parts. Glue together. Okay. In a small room. It is like a relic chamber on the top of the building. So, that, that's the vision. so here you can see this is a room. Mm the top on this part. So I wonder how they had to have the Buddha inside first and then they build it outside or how they move the Buddha from outside go in the outside. Yeah. 